Hey, welcome to today's episode. It has been a hot minute since I have been here recording, but I needed to record this very special story and life lesson that I got to learn this last week. Now, those of you that have been around and been listening to my podcast for some time will know this character of today's story very well. (laughs) It is um, a character that I speak of often, and it is a character that I personally have had a strained relationship with, a relationship that has required a lot of work. And initially one that I did not want to invest the time, the energy or the attention into. And yet last week I found myself absolutely heartbroken because this character's time here on earth was done. And so today I'm going to tell you about my dog, Reagan. And even just knowing that I'm going to share this with you, it just... Is so very tender because of um, the story that Reagan has been a part of my life and the lessons that she's taught me. So before I get into this story, if you do love dog stories, <laughs> you are a fellow canine lover. I have multiple episodes about my dog. The first one is episode 11. My dog got hit by a car. Yes, that happened more than once. And episode 25, buttered bagel ruined my day. 52, going to dog court. Yes, that really did happen. And 92, spiritual shock colors. So today I want to share the final chapter of Reagan's story. And when we first got Reagan, I was about eight months pregnant with my second son. And my husband, Ben, really wanted a hunting dog because he had these amazing dreams of hunting with a dog. (laughs) And he had decided that a German shorehead pointer was the perfect dog for our family. And I had always said to him, not until we get a yard, we need to have a yard because otherwise it's just going to be a nightmare. So when we purchased our first home in Morrison, Colorado, that was the red light for Ben. It's time for a dog. And he would go online and find different puppy litters of German shorthead pointers. And he got his heart set on these ones that I think they were coming from Kansas, but they were going to be in Colorado in Arvada, which later on was an area that we moved to. So he sweet talked me into just going to see the litter of puppies. Just so you know, if you are heavily pregnant and you see any sort of baby animal, you will not leave without it (laughs) because your hormones are just saying, I need to nurture something. (laughs) And that is exactly what happened. We went up and as soon as I saw her, I knew we had to have her, even though I did not want a dog. I was not interested in raising children and a dog because that seemed like a ton of work. Now, let me help you understand where I was as a human at this time. I was a young mom. My oldest son was almost three. And I I wanted to be the very best mom that I could ever be which I think most mums out there, absolutely that resonates with you, right? At this time in my life, I thought that meant um, only really being happy or having positive emotions or what I thought were positive emotions at the time, um, being easy to get along with, being uh, very flexible, almost being a bit of a chameleon, like being what people needed me to be. I thought would make me the best mum and making motherhood look easy. I thought if it was looked easy, then I was doing it right. (laughs) And I just want to offer that younger version of me so much love and kindness because she was just doing her best and she did a glorious job with what she knew and her life experience and her challenges and her strengths. And so There I am, I have this dog, I'm heavily pregnant. The dog is adorable. And to begin with, it was lovely. The dog, Reagan, and we named her, would lay on my belly and would take naps with me. And it was like so lovely. And then I had a baby and then the dog got 
bigger and didn't sleep as much. And instead of taking naps during the day, looked for things to be interested in. And that became a problem because she became interested in shoes, in diapers, in jumping the fence and running around my neighborhood. She became interested in everything that I didn't seem to have control over. And this began this very um, interesting and strained relationship I had with my dog because I saw her as the problem (laughs) so much of the time. There I am trying to teach my kids how to sleep train and how to use the bathroom and how to use manners and how to clean up while my dog is running around the neighborhood or my dog is stealing someone's trash or my dog has ripped up another diaper and is licking the poo from it. Yes, that happened so many times, you know? And so I saw her as this catalyst for pain in my life. And then that led me to have some resentment toward my husband for wanting this dog to hunt that he only hunted a few times a year. And he had a very busy work schedule. And we had decided as a family that at that time he would invest in his career and put a lot of hours in there while I would invest in nurturing and raising our children. And so Reagan happened to be the, the, kind of the, what is the word? Um, the bullseye of a lot of my frustration and anxiety and insecurities and all these things. And there was so many times that I had really unkind thoughts toward my dog. And there were times that I was not as kind as I could be. And I did think, you know, if she did run away for good, like maybe it would be okay. And while that's really uncomfortable for me to admit right now, it, I think it's really important that I do because so often we look at ourselves through a lens that is not real. And the fact is there were times when this relationship with my dog was so strained and so difficult because of my own mental health challenges that I was um, navigating in ways that weren't effective, in ways that were painful and ways that um, enhanced difficulty in my life. Um, And so the fact is, I did think at a time that, you know, she did get hit by a car and it hurt her and she needed to be put down, then that would maybe be one less thing that would be hard in my life. And um, I'm really, really thankful that God had a different plan for me and my dog, Reagan, because um, she lived for a long 12 and a half years. And throughout those years, I changed because I decided that the way I was living my life and trying to make motherhood look easy in trying to be this chameleon, be whatever people needed me to be to make them happy was so draining and exhausting and was so painful. Um, When I realized that I started to invest a lot of my attention into my own emotional and mental health. And that has taken me on such a magnificent journey that has led me to um, experience so much more compassion, so much more clarity and deeper connection with myself, with my father in heaven, and with all the people that are important to me in my life. And so Reagan is one of those individuals. She was a difficult relationship for me. But as I changed, as I learned more about myself, and these uncomfortable emotions that I had been ignoring for so many years, and I had been like stuffing them down and pretending that was okay, when I was absolutely not okay. And as I could start to kind of um, unravel these emotional habits that were so painful and so um, inefficient and just perpetuated more pain in my life, I was able to heal this relationship with my dog. And um, about four years ago, I was spending a lot more time with my dog and I was actually really enjoying her. She still jumped the fence. She still stole people's food. I mean, the dog, she has so many hilarious stories. I'll share one real quick with you. Um, this was after Halloween. Um, no, I think it might've been before Halloween. I don't know. <laughs> so around that time. And 
No, it was before Halloween. I'd got some Halloween candy. You know, those big bags that have about like 72 candies in them. I opened them to steal a few <laughs> to just enjoy myself. And she got into them. She ate every single one left. So it was about 68 candies or something. Ate them with their wrappers on. And then for the next couple of days, she pooped out wrapped chocolate candy. And we called them chocolate Eiffel Towers because they were like just these little poo towers. And we're like, oh, there's a Twix. Oh, there's a Milky Way. <laughs> oh, there's a Kit Kat. I mean, crazy. And then not so long after that, she jumped the fence and was running around and um, our neighbor calls and says, oh, Reagan's heading your way with a bag of candy. And Ben goes down after her <laughs> and she's just hurling up the street like her life depends on it. In her mouth is another giant bag of candy as candy is just flying <laughs> to the sides. <laughs> and there's just this candy trail behind her. I mean, she did plenty of crazy things, but at this point I was different. I, I had more effective ways of navigating my emotions. And so, um, I really was connected to her and I loved her. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, she's not going to live forever. I mean, none of us live forever, <laughs> but there was this realization that she wouldn't live as long as most people, because she's a dog. And so in my future would probably be a time that I would um, see her die, whether that was by natural cause or by putting her down. And it just, oh, it just, it really pierced my heart thinking of life without Reagan. Now, then we went on a traveling trip. And if you don't know about that, you can look back at the, um, in the podcast episodes and me and my family, we went on six months of full-time travel during COVID. Yes. You just need to go look for the episodes. It was a, a very unusual and incredible experience and time in our life that um, incredible healing happened for all of us. And Reagan was one of the ones um, out of our family that really, really um, experienced so much joy as we traveled because we were in the mountains and she just got to be wild and dig for animals and sniff all these wonderful smells. And we just spent time, the five of us together for four months exploring new places in America, in North America. And it really um, knitted us together in incredible ways. And she was so healthy and she had the time of her life. And just thinking back, there's some pictures and videos I have of her during that traveling time. And they are treasured moments because she was truly living her best life. It was as if everything up until that point had been preparing her for the most magnificent four month adventure ever. And um, we did travel for six months, but two of the months were in Ecuador. And so she did not come for those two months. She hung out with grandma. And uh, in the last about six to 12 months, there has been a decline in her health. She got cancer and we had, we got it removed and it was huge. It was about the size of a grapefruit. And the vet said he'd never seen one this big and this aggressive a type of cancer. And I was prepared that she was going to die maybe the next day. And he said she could just keel over at any moment. So I thought, oh, okay. And we cried a lot and we were prepping ourselves. And, and then she just bounced right back <laughs> and went back to jump in the fence or went back to gallivanting around our neighborhood. And then there were days that we thought she was going to die. And then she was just frolicking around the backyard and running and stealing pizzas. I mean, just back and forth constantly. And then the last couple of months, there has been a significant shift in her energy. And she went from just taking a few naps a day to sleeping nearly all the time. And when the doorbell would ring, she wouldn't even hear it. And um, then she wasn't even interested in her food, which never has happened for Reagan. Never. She has always eaten food as fast as possible and so the idea that a food dish would be in the same room 
or you would be trying to get her to eat peanut butter on bread and she would turn her nose up so out of character. And then um, a week ago, no, a week and a half ago, there was a dramatic decline and um, it became super clear, super clear that she was in significant pain and she wasn't eating. She was barely drinking. She was barely moving. She could barely open her eyes and her body was just so stiff. And we, we all, I think we all knew that it was time, but making that decision is so difficult. Deciding this animal's life is going to end today is such a heavy, heavy experience. At least it was for me. I felt this weight and this deep sorrow that we had a decision to make to either stop her suffering and for her story with us to end or to prolong that suffering so that we could be more comfortable. And I kept imagining what it would be like. I've never done this as an adult. I have been with my mum and we put down a puppy before. That was very sick, but it's different when you're the adult, when you're the one making the decision when you're the one carrying that weight, it it was very, very different. And I felt so much sorrow for the fact that her story with us right now was going to end and that there would be a hole. And I share this with you because I, I teach a lot about emotional health. And so often people think being emotionally healthy, being emotionally fit is what I like to call it, means that you don't have these difficult emotions. And it couldn't be further from the truth. It just couldn't. Being emotionally fit means you have tools and strategies that help you navigate all of the emotions in ways that are sustainable effective and healthy. And so there I was feeling this heavy sorrow. And the last week I have been grieving her. I have been grieving her. We went into the mountains, her favorite place, and she couldn't make it because she just, it wasn't going to work. And I just kept thinking of how much I missed her and how lucky we were to have her. And that we wouldn't have any more experiences with her on earth. And that was very sad to me. And I grieved. And then I got home and I look at her cage and I think, well, what are we going to do with her cage? And I grieve because at nighttime, I don't need to put her away. In the morning, I don't need to take her out or think about taking her on a walk or playing with her or making sure there's no food around for her to steal. Um, that is no longer. And this is one of the reasons I believe being emotionally fit is so critical because as we develop our emotional health, our emotional abilities to navigate life emotionally, everything is connected to emotions, everything. We will experience deeper, deeper and richer connections. Those relationships in your life will become sweeter because you navigate the ups and the downs because there are ups and downs. If your relationship was only sunshine and rainbows, you wouldn't know what you had because you didn't work for it. The things we work toward and work for help us grow. It changes us. It challenges us. Those relationships in your life that are really difficult for you that strain your trust and your hope, just perhaps surrender and yield into those opportunities to love more, to learn how to love and have boundaries, learn how to trust while you are feeling vulnerable. As we 
really give ourselves to these different experiences and learn to navigate our emotions instead of control the emotions of those around us, control the actions of those around us, but actually take it inward and think, how am I experiencing this? What can I learn from this? How can this experience help me make decisions in the future that will increase connection? that will help me more fully have compassion for myself and for others and give me clarity of mind and of words to articulate myself. If we can look at it that way, all the growth. My heart is totally broken because Reagan's story here on earth has come to an end. She has lived her final chapter and we will go on and we will remember and cherish those experiences with her. And I am different because of the challenge she was for me, because I chose to work at that relationship and learn how to navigate my emotional experience with her instead of control her so that she would never bring up anything uncomfortable with me. And that is something I wanted to share today as I really think about my awesome dog that was so perfect for us and I'm sure most of her quirks are because she spent the most time with me and I am a super quirky human and um, all over the place and so was she and we were far more similar than different and sometimes that in and of itself can be a challenge to um, be so close to someone that shares your same strengths and your same weaknesses. And yes, you're thinking she was a dog, not a human, but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. That relationship was real. And it was, um, it had gone through many, many ups and downs. It had been a roller coaster. And we had some low lows and some magnificent highs. And I encourage you as you face your challenges, as you face those relationships that perhaps feel strained to um, see how you can control your experience with them, how you can navigate your emotions with that individual that might be tricky or difficult or straining you in some sort of way and see what you can learn. And as you become more emotionally healthy, emotionally fit, you will see your compassion increase for them. You will see your connection deepen and your ability to have clarity in how you are experiencing them will become magnified. And those those gifts that you will receive will really help you move forward and help you become who you desire to become. And so if you are at a place in your life that you're like, oh my goodness, I love this idea of becoming emotionally fit, but like, what the heck does that mean? Um, I invite you go to my website, jessicacarneycoaching.com. You can also, there'll be a link somewhere (laughs) with the podcast that you can um, click on, but go and learn. I have a free class, a gift from me to you to help you see how your emotions, the way you're emotionally experiencing your life is a massive strain. It's a massive threat on your energy. And friends, we need more energy. We all do. Everyone's so tired. Everyone's so busy. So we need to learn how to use our energy in more wise ways, how to use our energy and our attention in ways that are going to bless us and help us multiply the goodness that we desire and that we are. So go check that out. There's also a, a a mini course. That's what it's called a mini course. And it's called energy boost mini course. And it's all about, um, developing an awareness about how you right now are experiencing your life emotionally. And this awareness is going to help you figure out where your energy is going and how to boost it all within a week. It's super awesome. And then coming soon is a full at your own pace course that is going to just give you all the tools that you need to really get in an emotional shape. That's right. Become emotionally fit. You know, we're excited about being physically fit, being intellectually fit, but what about your emotions? Emotions are connected to everything you do. And if you don't have sustainable tactics and strategies and tools, you are going to burn out and you will have a midlife crisis, or maybe it will be an early life crisis. You will have one and you will break and you don't need to take that route. There is a different way. Life will be hard, 
but we don't need to make it harder than it needs to be. We can still grow as we experience our emotions in healthy, sustainable, and effective ways. And as we do that, we'll develop more compassion, we'll have more connection and more clarity as we grow as an emotional being. I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. If you have a pet at home, go just play with that dear pet, play with your dear loved ones, be present and become emotionally fit. I love you. <laughs> Bye.